Most well-written scenes can be broken down into one of two types. Today I'm going to explain what those two types are and how you can properly structure them. What's up guys, my name is Brandon McNulty, I'm a writer, I'm the author of Bad Parts, and welcome to my writing channel. As I mentioned in the intro, today we're going to be talking about the two main types of scenes. And these are the types of scenes you will see in pretty much all of fiction. They are everywhere. But uh, for whatever reason, these aren't often taught to writers uh, you know, at any stage of their career. It's something that you kind of have to hope you learn somewhere along the way. Today I want to be that person who passes along the information to you. Hopefully we'll walk you out the door with a, a great understanding of how to structure scenes and how to take this information instantly into your own work and apply it there. Now as far as the types of scenes, as I mentioned, there are two of them. The first type of scene is the goal-oriented scene. This is one where a character has a goal, they face conflict as they're trying to achieve that goal, and then the scene ends in disaster because we can't have our characters getting what they want. We can't make it too easy. We need disaster in order to keep the, the readers going. But when, you, when you're looking at a goal-oriented scene, these are typically you know, ones where you start off with a character. They have a clear set motive, a specific motive in mind. We, we understand that they want something. That is their goal. And as they're pursuing their goal, they face conflict. They face obstacles. If we don't have obstacles, it's boring. You have to have something getting in the way of that character getting what they want. So once you have your goal, they face conflict. They fight through that conflict. But in the end, it finally breaks down and it ends in disaster. Goal, conflict, disaster. That is the recipe for a goal-oriented scene. Always find a way to end it on disaster or something going not as planned because if, if it ends in disaster then it's easier to go toward the reaction scene because reaction scenes are gonna be you know reliant upon there being something going wrong because the way a reaction scene works this also breaks down into three steps and it breaks down into a reaction which is an emotional reaction that a character has you know in response to that previous disaster so how do they feel about what happened? Uh, you know, is it bothering them? You know, does it bring them down? Does it crush their spirits? Does the audience is the audience able to empathize with them? That is so important. They should be able to empathize with them, and you know they should feel something for the character who is hurting right here. Now, after they've you know reacted emotionally, then they move on into the dilemma, and the dilemma is where the character is sorting through their options, trying to figure out what to do next, and their options should not be good ones. There shouldn't be like an obvious choice like, oh, we could just do this now. No, there should be difficult choices here to make. Like, you know, do I choose the terrible option or the other terrible option? I mean, basically the character should reason through this, figure out how do I move forward, and then finally they make their decision. And when they make their decision, they are pursuing a new goal, or maybe they're pursuing a previous goal in a different way. And as you can imagine, once they've made their decision, then we go back to a goal-oriented scene. We go goal, conflict, disaster, disaster happens. We go back to the reaction-oriented scene, reaction, dilemma, decision. So, I mean, that's the easiest way to put it down. You have two types of scenes with three structural beats that you need to hit. Goal, conflict, disaster, reaction, dilemma, decision. If I were you, I would recommend writing down those six points. Maybe just write them on a post-it note. Keep it near your writing desk. Maybe stick it to your computer monitor, whatever it is. Whenever you're working on scenes and you're unsure if you're, if you're doing things right, just refer to that. Just look down, glance down at it. When I first learned about structuring out scenes like this, it was, it was hard to remember the steps because it's like, oh, I got these six things I got to remember, I, you know, the goal, the reaction, what's going on. Uh, just write them down. Trust me, if you keep it handy at your desk, it'll, it'll come more naturally to you over time. Once you start, you know, figuring out this structure and figuring it out how to apply it to your own work, your stories will make more sense. They will follow a more logical path and your readers will enjoy them more. Now, as for an example, let's take a look at the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark, which is, of course, the first Indiana Jones movie. And if you've ever seen the movie, you know that it opens up with a goal-oriented scene. Indiana Jones, right at the start, he wants something specific. He wants the golden idol, and he has to get it from the tomb. But it's not easy because there's tons of conflict getting in the way, tons of obstacles. Everything from his partners betraying him, to tarantulas crawling all over him, to arrows being fired at him, to the tomb collapsing over him, and a bold 
boulder rolling after him. Everything that can go wrong does go wrong for Indiana Jones. And toward the end of the scene, he does manage to get the idol and escape the tomb. But that's when disaster strikes. His rival Belloc ends up taking the golden idol off him, and Indy is now surrounded by a bunch of Jovitos who want to kill him, and he has to run for his life in order to escape. Now, if you remember, the scene that follows is the one that takes place at the university where Indy teaches. And this is a reaction scene. The reaction phase of the scene starts when he's talking to Marcus Brody and Indy says, I had it, Marcus. And then he starts talking about how he wants to get it back. This is Indy going through the emotions that follow his disaster in the prior scene. Then Indy faces the dilemma. He's, he's thinking about how he can get it back. He knows where it'll probably be sold to. He wants to go and buy it off the, off the, the, the merchant who gets it, but this is where Marcus brings up the fact that uh, people from Army Intelligence want to talk to Indy about something. So Indy's dilemma, it's not a high-stakes dilemma, but it's, do I, do I go after the idol or do I talk to these people from the Army? And ultimately, he decides to talk to the people from the Army, and this is where the story gets really set in motion. So these first two scenes are a great example of how you can open up with a goal scene and follow it up with a reaction scene. And this is something you should be striving for in your own work. And if you start doing this, if you include both scenes in your story, your readers will appreciate it. One more thing I want to throw out there before I wrap up today's video. If you're interested in learning more about the two different types of scenes, I can recommend the book Techniques of the Selling Writer by Dwight Swain. It's an older writing guide. It's from the 60s, but there is a lot of valuable information in here. I definitely recommend it, especially if you want to learn more about how to write different scenes and how to structure them out. I'll link it in the description below. I will also provide a link to an article on the subject of these two different types of scenes. It's from advancedfictionwriting.com. It's very very popular writing website and that particular article has been such a huge help to me. Everything I taught you in today's video I learned first from that article so definitely give it a look if you want a little more information on it. Question of the day, what type of scene have you most recently written? Was it a goal scene or was it a reaction scene and did it follow the three structural points of that scene? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend if you don't mind. Pick up a copy of Bad Parts if you haven't already. And as always, remember to keep on writing.